This section deals with color, in particular RGB image color and color management. One of the fascinating things about digital color is how it's displayed. There are actually two ma main basic modes that color is displayed in. And this is a great little diagram, and it's, but it has its limitations. What this shows is this kind of funny uh, shape right here is actually what's known as lab color, um, which has nothing to do with laboratories. It actually stands for LAB, um, L being lightness, and then an A and a B channel uh, of color. But this was mapped out by the International Color Consortium, also known as ICC, um, as being the, all the colors that humans are able to perceive. And a smaller subset of that is what we can actually display on a monitor using RGB color capture with a digital camera. And these are all RGB colors. And what we've got here is this yellow line is showing the smaller subset of colors that can be displayed using RGB color. And then even smaller than that is what we can actually print, the CMYK gamut in this case. And this is one of the reasons I like this... Um, I like this because it shows that the colors that can be represented by RGB and CMYK are good, but there is a problem with this. In this diagram, the CMYK gamut goes outside of the RGB gamut in a number of areas, which is not actually totally accurate. I have a better way of showing the difference between RGB and CMYK. And that's actually using this neat little uh, tool called ColorThink. And color is actually three-dimensional digital color, and what we're looking at here is a three-dimensional model of CMYK, in this case, Swap CMYK, which is standard web offset press. And I mentioned the lab color. What this is is the L is lightness. When you go down towards the bottom, it's dark. You go up towards the top, it's light. So black would be at the bottom of the lightness, and white would be at the top of the lightness. And then there are two other channels in lab color, the A channel and the B channel. And I've heard it described really well as being A is for apples, because it goes from red to green, red and green apples. And B is bananas. It goes from um, yellow for bananas to blue, which is, could also be B. So A goes from red to green, B goes from yellow to blue. And you can, you can display all the colors that humans can perceive using this model this three-dimensional model. So again, this is CMYK color that you're seeing right here, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on Adobe RGB. And this is the three-dimensional model of the colors that can be displayed using Adobe RGB. As you can see immediately, it's quite a bit larger. The colors are far more saturated than they were on the CMYK model. And just to really display it extremely well, I'm going to turn this, the RGB into a wireframe. So the wireframe is showing the colors that are going to be displayed with um, RGB, and the model inside is the colors that can be displayed using CMYK. As you can see, CMYK is, can only display a very small subset of the colors that RGB can display. That's a critical thing to be aware of, because what, um, what that means is you can't print all the colors that you can display on a monitor or that you can capture using a digital camera or a microscope or a scanner. Um, that's very key. So to continue, well what does that mean? Um, the key thing is something like this. Whenever you want to print a figure, colors have to be converted from RGB into CMYK. Um, ten years ago, because of this reason, DJS required all authors to submit their figures in CMYK mode. Um, the idea being that figures would always be shown in CMYK mode so that they matched the print as close as possible. Well, with um, the internet becoming as important as it has now, and how many journals um, have the issue the the uh, issue of record being the online journal the print has kind of taken a bit of a back seat and and it, we've turned around to allowing RGB color submission and here's one of the reasons 
when authors convert to CMYK, uh, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of software out there that can convert colors from RGB to CMYK. So here's a perfect example of what can happen if, if the conversion is not particularly great. Here's a figure showing an author's supply file, which if you didn't know it, you, you'd think it was probably just fine, but somebody saw that it was a little flat and asked to see the original RGB. This is actually a real, um, uh, something that did happen uh, a couple years back, several years back, and um, so we, we requested to get the RGB, and there was a pretty major difference. Um, the main thing being, you'll notice that there's detail in each one of these little spots, which with the author supplied conversion was, was lost. There's some detail in there. Well, we have a bunch of ways of trying to make sure that we get a good conversion. And so when we actually converted this to CMYK, you can see that we couldn't hold the color because simply put, you saw from that diagram, these particular blues are not available to the CMYK gamut. So they had to be changed closer to these blue to the blues that they supplied so there was a change a shift in color however by using a different rendering intent we were able to maintain some of the uh, original data so that's the real point it's all about making conversions from RGB to CMYK that's important and we use a, a color managed conversion which tries to get the best conversion so Here's some more reasons why it's important to submit, or good to submit an RGB. First of all, all captures are made in RGB. Digital cameras capture uh, color in RGB, scanners capture color in RGB, microscopes capture color all in RGB. It's all done in RGB, uh, and monitors display in RGB. CMYK is only used for printing. So RGB does capture the original science without a change in mode. So for that reason, it's easier for authors. They don't have to um, convert it to CMYK before they send it to us. And we do a color managed conversion to CMYK for print only. That get, uh, allows the opportunity for full gamut RGB online for the issue of record. Um, in essence, what's captured is what goes online because the internet also, because it's displaying on a monitor, uses RGB. A little bit about how that conversion takes place. Now, if you remember this shape right here, you'll remember that's that's the lab space of all the colors that um, the human eye can see. So what happens is um, an author supplies us a file in RGB, red, green, blue, and uses we. What we do is we take this RGB space and color managed changes it to lab space. Lab space is a device independent. It means it never changes, whereas RGB and CMYK are both device dependent. So first we move it into lab space. And then we take it from lab space and we move it back out to CMYK. As you can see, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, CMYK. And so that's the output profile. So what this is all about is ICC profiles. By knowing the profile of this color, the profile is basically a map of the color. It tells us how this particular RGB displays color. If we know that profile, we convert it to a good lab space and then we can convert it to a good CMYK profile. Don't worry too much about all these details. What really matters is that it's very important that the ICC profile be available. And here's an example of why. Here's the same figure displayed. It, nothing was changed about this figure. However, this figure on the left was displayed as Adobe RGB. And over on the right here, it is being displayed in Rico RGB, which is actually a Russian profile, it turns out. And as you can see, there's a very major difference, especially in this, fig, this uh, panel right here, how there's a lot of greens that show in the, in the Rico space that don't show in the Adobe space. And if you don't know what space, what color space the figure is in, it's easy for this kind of stuff to happen. So it's extremely important for this reason 
to make sure that the ICC profile is embedded in the file so we can do a proper conversion. And so it displays color accurately. Now, I'm not saying that one of these is better or worse than the other. It all depends on the original intent. I'm assuming that the original intent was this green, um, what was this Rico, because to, to me it looks better. You can see more detail. Um, so that's the kind of thing that can happen. So, okay, how do you embed profiles? Um, if you're using Photoshop or Illustrator, there's uh, checkboxes. And these are very important. When you're, if you're saving a TIFF file, right here in the dialog box for TIFF, and this same dialog box exists if you're saving as a JPEG, all you have to do is make sure this box ICC profile is checked and you'll, you'll save the profile. It, it will save it within the file so that when we try to do a color manage conversion, it will convert properly. And if Illustrator, there's a, a, a similar checkbox, Embed ICC Profile. And on to Section 3.